Number one says give each solid a geometric name and be as precise as you can. So we're going to take a look at how many bases they have and then this, the number of sides in the base. So for this one, we just see this one base down here. And if we count the number of sides, and you can count the number of lines going up, that's also the same as the number of sides because it's the number of vertices. And so let's see, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So this one um, is gonna be a hexagon for the base. So we'll say hexagonal, and then it goes up to one point, so it's a pyramid. This next one has two bases, and so we see the space down here, and then we see the space up here. And those bases are triangles, so this one is going to be a triangular and since it has two bases and it stays uniform all the way up instead of going to a point, this one's going to be a prism. C has a circle for the base and then it goes up to one point. So you might think circular pyramid, but this one has a special name of a cone. All right, number two says that we're gonna take these two-dimensional shapes, the list of two-dimensional shapes and match them to their solid. So this first one gives us two congruent triangles and then three rectangles. So the two congruent triangles needs to be the base because we couldn't have three bases. So this one has two triangular bases and then rectangles connecting them. So this is going to be a right triangular prism. So prisms have two bases. Um, four triangles and one rectangle. So this one rectangle is going to need to be the base. So we'll have a base of a rectangle. And then all the sides are going up to one point, making them all triangles. And so this is going to be a square or rectangular pyramid. So this is number one, this is number four. C has two squares and four congruent parallelograms. So this again is gonna be the base. Now when the sides connecting them are parallelograms instead of rectangles, that means that this shape is slanted. And so these sides connecting them are now parallelograms instead of rectangles. And that's going to be give us an oblique prism or an oblique shape. So that's number two. And then the final one then would be four congruent equilateral triangles. That's going to be a right triangular prism. So that's going to have a triangle at the base. And then all the sides are going to be going up to one point, making those um, three faces triangles as well. Number three, these three congruent square pyramids can be assembled into a cube with a side length of one foot. What's the volume? So remember that the volume formula for a cube is just a side cubed. And so this is going to be one cubed or just one and then foot cubed. Number four, a prism has a height of four inches and a volume of 120. Select all figures that could be the base for this prism. So remember off to the side here, I'm just gonna do the volume formula for a prism. It's area of the base times the height. So we know that the volume is 120 and we know that the height is four. So if we solve this for the base, we would just divide by four and find out that as long as our base is equal to 30, um, our base area is equal to 30, then this will have a volume of 120. So here we have a rectangle. We find rectangle area by multiplying um, the dimension. So we get 30 here. So this one's going to be good. A square with side lengths of five, the area of that's going to be five squared, which is 25. So that's not going to work. A circle with a radius of five is going to be five squared times pi. So that's going to be 25 pi, which is going to be way too big. 
A star-shaped base with an area of 30. That's good. A right triangle with legs of 5 and 12. So triangle area is base times height divided by 2. So this is 60 divided by 2, which is 30. So that one's going to be good. Next, um, for number five, we have the prism has a right triangular base. The volume of the prism is 54. What is the height? So again, for volume, we have area of the base times the height for a prism. And in this case, we have a volume of 54. And then we have this base area shown. So let's go ahead and figure out um, the area of this base. And we see that it's a right triangle. And they give us two of the three dimensions here. So they give us that the hypotenuse is three, or sorry, is five, and the leg is four. So you might realize that this is a three, four, five right triangle. And then you just know that that's a three right away. If you didn't, remember that you need to do Pythagorean theorem. So five squared equals four squared plus X squared. So this is 25 and 16. So we'll subtract 16 from both sides to get nine and then square root to get that three. So that's how we come up with that three if you didn't know it. So now when we go to find um, the area of this base, remember that the area of the base is the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So three times four divided by two and then um, times the height of the shape. So remember the height of our shape connects the bases. So this is H. Okay, so here's the um, area of our triangular base, which is 12 divided by two. So the area of that is six, whoops. So we've got 54 equals six times H since that simplifies to six. So then we'll just divide by six and we get nine equals our height. Number six, the solid has curved sides. All cross sections are parallel to the base and there's squares measuring three on each side. So all the cross sections are parallel to this three by three square, the height from the base to the top of this shape is five units. What's the volume? So this is similar to a prism since it's got parallel cross sections. I know it curves, um, but it's got those two bases. So it's gonna be area of the base times the height. And the area of this base is three times three, which is nine. And then times the height of the shape, which is five. So the volume is going to be 45 units cubed. Number seven, find the volume of each solid. So a cylinder volume is area of the base times the height. And then um, our base shape is a circle. So we're going to be doing pi times r squared and our r was three. And then the height of the shape is two. So then this is nine pi times two, which is 18 pi and then inches cubed for volume. Second one, we have a hexagonal prism whose base area, so they're giving us the base area is 4.5 and the height is seven. So volume is equal to, again, for a prism, area of the base times the height. In this case, the area of our base is 4.5 and our height is seven. So we'll do 4.5 times seven and we'll get 31.5 centimeters cubed for that one. Third one, we have a prism that's five feet tall, so giving us the height and whose base is a right triangle with legs of three halves and nine feet. So this is gonna help us with the base area, and then this is our height. So again, it's a prism, so area of the base times the height. So to find the area of the base, we'll multiply the legs together. So um, 
three halves, I'm just going to write as 1.5 times 9 divided by 2. That's going to be um, the area of our base. And if we multiply that out, we get 6.75 and then times a height of 5. So when we do 6.75 times 5, we end up with a volume of 33.75 feet cubed. And then finally, number eight, we have a circle that has an area of pi square units. It's dilated using a scale factor of five. What is um, the area of the dilated circle? So remember that we know when we're dealing with area that that multiplies by a scale factor squared. So we'll take um, our new area. We'll equal our original area times the scale factor squared. Okay, so our new area is going to equal the original, which is pi, times the scale factor, which is 5 squared. So our new area is going to be 25 pi. And then um, just units squared since they didn't tell us any units. 